Algerian-born mother of two, Afeda Sarashi, is looking for £84,000 for a 15% share in her business. But can she convince the Dragons that it's a worthwhile investment? Hi, my name is Afida. My business is called Handy Girl. We are based in Swindon and I'm looking for £84,000 investment for 15% share in my business. Handy Girl is predominantly female operative, specialising in home repair and garden maintenance. Our target market are single female, elderly people and women head of the household who might feel more comfortable with a female in their home. Handy Girl ethos is about treating people the way we would like to be treated. It's about treating people, their home and time with respect. It's about providing quality workmanship at a fair price. It's about leaving our work area clean and provide superior customer service. With £84,000 investment today, I would like to translate my Handy Girl business model into a management franchise system. Handy Girl is a great investment because you will be investing in Handy Girl as a brand. Last but not mean least, Handy Girl is a brilliant investment for you guys because you will be investing in me. I am passionate, I am determined and driven. With my passion and determination and your investment and expertise, we will make it happen. Thank you for listening. It's a spirited pitch from Swindon-based Hafida Sarashi, who's offering the Dragons a 15% stake in her women-only odd job business in return for £84,000 to franchise the company. James Khan has made millions of his own by franchising businesses and wants more details. Hafida, hi, I'm James. Hi, James. What exactly, what, what are the services that you offer your customers? So... What we do is we do painting, and decorating but also we do where the female touch comes into place is that we just we don't we do painting and decorating but we create the wow factor so we have a makeover services as well and helping hand when people want to move we call it a, a moving house assistant to do that so it's like a general handyman come building type of service where you will advertise I'll call you'll send somebody down they'll give me a quote but the, the uniqueness of your proposition is I get a female to do it rather than a man to do it. Absolutely, and the customer have the choice. What's wrong with men? There is nothing wrong with men. There so why not have handy people? The vision of Handy Girl really is to put some old fashioned values back into the property maintenance. Why can't men do that? They can. You but said there was nothing wrong with men. No, there is nothing wrong with men, but what is actually what we do differently is that we stick to our promises. If I and promise men don't? You, Majority of them don't, no. Men don't stick to the promises? Not, not all of them, I'm afraid. Well, there'd be no point in me promising to invest in you, would there? Because I probably wouldn't stick to the promise. No, you are an investor and I'm looking forward to you to be on board. I just don't see why it's girls on it. I just, I just think it's so sexist. Duncan Bannatyne has taken umbrage at a feeder's women-only ethos. Will Theo Pafitis share his concerns as he seeks answers on the company credentials? What qualifications have you got in doing small building works? Have you but, done your sitting guilds? Have you got done an apprenticeship? No, we haven't, because the type of work we do are basically minor painting and decorating. Well, hold on, hold on. You, you just stood there and you maligned every man who does building work as being pretty well useless. No. And these are people who have done an apprenticeship, who are skilled tradesmen that support their families and I've got integrity. And now you, I've put a t-shirt on, it's handy girl. I've got no qualifications, but because you're a girl, you think that allows you to malign every builder out there? No, what we're doing is we're not actually insulting anybody. Um, You've I'm done not... a good job. You've no, done no, a I'm, good job then. I'm sorry if it's the case. I'm actually um, talking about handyman, not a tradesman, because they have the qualification. I'm talking... So to be a handy girl, you don't need to know anything? You, you have to have experience. It's not just about putting a brush, painting and decorating. It's more than that. So, At the so moment, my don't have a tradesman come in, have a handy girl because she's nearly there. She's nearly as good as him, but she's a girl, so that's okay. 
You know, I had a dealing with a local handyman who made me feel very uncomfortable in my own home. What I'm doing now is providing customers a choice, a safety for, make, for them to make, to make them feel more comfortable in their own home. That's my objective. My competitor are the local handymen, not directly the tradesmen at all. So that's... You need to stop talking and you need to listen. Sure. You're going to recruit unqualified people to do building work around the country, it's a potential for disaster. You will be tied up in litigation, trouble and aggravation. For so long, you won't have time to run your business. And those are the reasons why I'm out. Afida has failed to convince Theo Pafitis that Handy Girl is worth backing as a brand. Now, Peter Jones decides to test out the entrepreneur's business acumen. Afita, hi, I'm Peter. Hi, Peter. Um, handy girl, you mentioned single female elderly people. That's right. How many of that is your target market? How many people is that? At the moment, we'll be focusing in the region of 20,000 people. And how will your franchise system work? What it's, are you going to do that's different to everybody else? They can, the beauty about Handy Girl is that the ethos we have. I'm passionate about my business, and I would treat your home as if it was mine. But everybody else, you'd be very unusual to find somebody else that would say, I'm going to set up a business called Handy Woman and I'm going to treat people with disrespect, I'm going to trash their house and do the worst job I can. I everybody has the same ethos as you. I'm trying to get to it. What are you going to do that's different to everybody else? What is different is basically we'll be looking after the franchisee, where point we're giving them the lead and they will be responsible for turning the lead into sales. OK, so now so, how do you get the leads? Well, this is through brand awareness. So what are you going to do with brand awareness? Basically working with the local media and the national media. And what we do is... No, Afita, let's slow down a bit. Sure. Try and be specific. I'm asking you specific questions. Tell me what you're going to do. What is brand awareness to you? Brand awareness is telling the world about but handy But how girl. are you going to do that? As true satisfied customer, we do that. Referrals, we will do that. True publicity, we will do that. Afida is standing her ground. But is she doing enough to win the confidence of the remaining multi-millionaires? Peter, hello. Hi. I'm Deborah. Hi, Deborah. I think I understand women going into the home thing. What makes you think that's franchisable? It's the, the business ethos we have and also the whole programme, the system, where people will be focused on taking the lead and turn it into sale. Yeah, but hold on, that's, that's any running... woman in the country thinking, well, here's a business opportunity in my local area. I'll go out there and advertise myself as a female who will go into the thing. What actually makes this franchisable? Why don't they do that? Why would they pay you? Because Why wouldn't they just do what you're doing? They, and there is a few people doing what they do, but what I do about it is I do sell my business, and I know how to sell my, my yeah, services. Yeah, but that's you selling your business. Once you franchise that, you lose control of that. You'll have an army of other people who've got their own ethos and doing their own thing, doing it in their own way. Some sure. will be good, some will be blinking awful. So once you start franchising your model, you have completely lost control of that. Well, at the moment, what I do is I provide my c every single customer... No, no, I no, that's you. I agree. Do you know, I bet you're really good. I'd have you in my home. You, no problem. Very conscientious. I bet you do a fantastic job. We'll not criticise you on that ground. Absolutely. Person living in Pembrokeshire who's doing... You've franchised out to them. Yeah. They are representing you and your franchise model. <laughs> they don't care. How do you control that? Well, we'll have to go a, bit, uh, a step further and we go to the process where we, they will shadow one of us to see exactly if they apply what they mean. Do you don't think that might be slightly... £84,000 is going to get complete brand awareness, it's going to set up a training programme and it's going to get a, set up a system that allows you to shadow other franchisees to check the quality of those franchises. <laughs> I have to tell you, it would take an awful lot more than £84,000 to do the brand awareness that you're talking about. So I think, you, you know, you're good, you're passionate, you keep doing what you're doing, earn yourself some good money out of it. Not a franchisable model. That reason, I'm out. OK, thank you. Afita, um, I, I really think that you just got so many things wrong about your business model. I think you should go and carry on on your own. You'll never make a franchise out of this. You won't make a big business out of it, so I'm out. The Dragons might like Afida as an individual, but they don't think her business is scalable and she's running out of options. Only James Kahn and Duncan Bannatyne now stand between her and failure in the den. Afida, let me do you a favour. Sure. 
I've built a franchise business in 30 countries, and I think Deborah's absolutely right. Your excitement and enthusiasm is because of you, because you're doing a good job, you really believe in it, but I'm not convinced that you yourself can be replicated across the country. So there is no doubt in my mind this will not work. For that reason, I don't think I could invest in this. I'm out. OK, thank you. Um, you know, you've, you've valued your company at £476,000 pre-money raising. I value it at about 476000 or less than that, about nothing. So for that reason, I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The handy girl managed to convince the dragons of her personal skills, but failed to get an investment to franchise her business. And she leaves the den with nothing.